Good morning from Southwest Oklahoma. I'm Karen Clammer with Elgin First Assembly of God Church, Elgin, Oklahoma, and we welcome you to online Sunday school. Always glad to have everybody that can join us. We know that some people uh, are able to join later on, but we're thankful for those who are on now or will be coming on soon. The title of our lesson is Human Sinfulness Begins. It's lesson three in our new quarterly, September 18th, 2022. We're just getting a little bit of a head start on it. Our study text today is from Genesis chapter 3, verse 1 through Genesis 4, 26. Our central truth, all have sinned and fallen short of glorifying God. Our key verse is from Romans chapter 5 and verse 12. By one man sin entered into the world and death by sin and so death passed upon all men so that all have sinned. We can all agree to that, that that, is, that has happened for sure. We have to stay tuned into the Lord and trusting Him to keep us clean and pure from sin. And He's always ready and willing to do that. Our learning objectives are these. We will acknowledge that sin and death enter the world through the actions of Satan and human beings. We will recognize that sin puts a barrier between people and God and that sin must be consistently avoided. Amen. Consistently. Hi, Lisa. Glad to have you on. We will be challenged to trust God to help us live holy lives before him. Yes, we do. And we commit this uh, teaching session right now to the Lord, trusting him and believing him to help us in every way. Our hearts are open. Our minds are open. We want to receive from the Lord exactly what he has, has for us to receive tonight. Human sinfulness begins. It's a horrible thing. It just from the beginning, what the Lord created was good. Everything was good. He said there was a time when the world was perfect. In fact, the Lord judged it as very good. He was so happy and you know, but this wonderful state was ruined when our first parent, our first parents decided to go against what God had said. Well, like we said, one simple little rule. We're thinking just one, that's all. One simple rule and they could eat of the trees, the fruit of the garden, except there was one you, they were not to eat of. And that was the, the, it would be of the knowledge of good and evil. They should not eat of that tree. And that was the only one. They had all these others that they could partake of. Well, anyway, we will see, uh, find out about the, the costly pain that it was and that we are still dealing with what they did. Their, their disobedience would have worldwide effects. They probably could never have imagined that. It was just the two of them. Their disobedience would have worldwide results as they lost their home, their security, and the entire, as the entire human race was plunged into the power of sin. Oh, I'm thankful that though the Lord made a way, we, we have salvation. At that time, they did not, but the Lord did have that plan even from, he, he knew, he knew, he knows the end from the beginning, and he knew what was going to happen and what he was going to do. But in the, in the intervening time in there, that's when we had the blood sacrifices, and we won't be talking a lot about that, but we will begin a little bit about it. All of us have at least seen the painful results of natural disasters. And we see on television or on internet, we've seen the power of sin, what it brings to people when they disobey God. Uh, you can hear things of such as murders and all kinds of, and uh, when you think of robberies, you think of, we could just go on and on of, of even embezzlement of crimes that maybe they don't point a gun at somebody, but they actually embezzle and, and, uh, and it's very it's very costly thing. So the human entire human race has fallen from God's way and find themselves in a spiritual disaster, disaster, desperately needing a Savior. Oh, what a Savior we have, Jesus Christ. I'm so glad that we have Him. I like what our, our writer brings out in our lesson that God immediately addressed the disaster of sin. He had, since the foundation of the world, decided to send His Son to die for us. For now, He would work to teach humanity, as I said, and what they would do. They would, there would be this inter intervening plan that we've already talked about is that that would be this where they had to offer the sacrifices and i like where the way that i really liked what our writer said he said when adam and eve took their eyes off god and focused on satan's empty promise satan's empty promise he always over promises and under delivers he couldn't do what he said he he, he just he why and he lied as he deceived but we're going into this in depth of how and I, I one thing I want to mention is I heard it said a long time ago and I like this sin will take you farther than you want to go keep you longer than you want to stay and cost you more than you want to pay how many 
everybody listening to this at now or later will kind of say that's so real that is so real and we could think of so many lives that have been ruined and twisted and and uh, it's it's a horrible thing but yet so thankful for jesus he has it's the plan of salvation his love is just it's beyond comprehension but we do accept that and we're thankful that the lord makes a way and he wants to have that communion with us that's what he wants he loves that he loves it when we come to him and say i've sinned i've done wrong he wants to help us and he wants us to have that great fellowship every day he's just there to help us that that's that's what he's he's that's who he is that's what he's like and as we read in the scriptures here it talked about how that Satan, the serpent, has entered into Satan, and he was the shrewdest of the wild animals. Many other translations say that he was cunning. Uh, well, okay, that'd be another good word for that. But Satan used, he used to, the first student, for the first humans, he wanted to sin. He became, he was so shrewd, he was so cunning. He was out, but one thing we need to remember, any time that Satan comes to us, what he does, Satan is out to steal, kill, and destroy. He made this attack when he said to Eve, did God really, did he really say this? Or, if, you know, you, you can't eat. Oh, yeah, she said, we, we, we can eat of the, of the trees of God. It's just, you know, this one we can't. And then, but the, but then he's, the, Satan, he just kept on and on, you know, the serpent just kept talking to her. And, and, uh, and then he said to her, you know, he said, you won't surely die. He just was very bold, you know, as if he knew that. And she listened, and then uh, it was a shame when she 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 knew the thing is they knew the truth but didn't abide by the truth, and it just sounded so good, and he probably sounded so so right as he was saying, "You won't surely die." And then somebody asked a question of the day. I heard somebody mention about who opened the gate to let the serpent in. Who opened the gate? Who let him in? Well, I don't know all the details of that, and I don't know if if all of these uh, animals were there in the garden. I don't know all of that. Maybe somebody does know the answer. Maybe it's there, and I missed it. But I do know this. Satan offered an empty promise as he said, You won't surely die. You can go ahead and eat everything. You can do that. He was as wrong as he could be. How can the study of God's Word prepare believers to face temptations? The writer asked. It's so important to know God's Word, not just know it, but abide by it, and know that it is our protection. It is our protection. We know what it says, do it, and it brings the peace and the quietness. And you know, it's a blessing to the Lord when he sees his children obey because he knows we're going to avert that sin that could destroy it. The thing of it is, what we do, others will see, and maybe they would, will do too. So it's important that we just do that. That is the right thing to do, and it brings the joy and the gladness and the peace of God in our hearts. And too, it's a good example for others to see and that they, they get to make their choice. The thing I like, though, even in this hour, the Lord was ready. He was ready to, to do something. And I like he was immediately. He, there was a barrier that was formed now. Because what happened? Uh, they, they didn't, you know, when Jesus, uh, the, when God was going to come in the evening, he was going to walk with him in the garden like he always did. Instead of them running to meet him, they didn't. They, there was fear. And so when the Lord calls out, and he says, Adam, where are you? Where are you? Oh, he's hiding. Hey, well, well, why, why are you hiding? And there, when it all came out, the serpent, the deceiver, always does. That's what he does. He always deceives. He always lies. He has no good in mind. You may say, well, but I know people that they're not Christians. And look how they just, they have so much, so many good things. They just are really... Well, the thing of it is, Satan may give them these things just to keep them in bondage because they may think, oh, look at me, look what all I have. Well, they may have a lot of worldly goods, but what about having that right relationship with the Lord? You can't go to heaven and have a wrong relationship with the Lord. You, you, you can't. And so it's just so important that we are so faithful. And the one thing that we must do is confess our sin. And this is the thing that the Lord wanted them to do. He knew what had happened. He knows everything. He knew what had happened. But he wanted them. He wanted them to speak up and to say what had happened. And from the beginning, God has been the one to seek us out in our, in our sin. Not because he's mad at us, but because he wants to be back in right relationship. He knows the misery that we have being in sin. 
not that he's always there reaching out and I'm, that's what we call conviction i'm thankful for the conviction of the holy spirit to draw us to the lord and for us to acknowledge that we've sinned but what happens a lot of times well i it was because i wouldn't have if and that's actually what it before it was all said and done this is what they were doing they were doing the playing the, the blame game and uh, well it was for this reason it wasn't well you know it was it, it was it was uh, you know well it, it was the serpent and he's and uh, Adam was saying, well, it, it was, you know, it was her, you know, the wife that you gave me, almost like blaming God. And, but the thing is, we, we can't shift blame. The best thing to do is just plead guilty because that's what we are. And the Lord is, that's what he's wanting and to bring us in that right relationship that we say, I did it and not, I did it and I'm glad. No. And, and not any more of this, of this stuff of, well, I, I did it because I had rather, it's easier to ask for, uh, for forgiveness than it is to ask for permission that is one of the most dangerous things and i think i said it last week and i'll say it a whole lot of times we have an advocate with the father and i'm thankful that we have i want to tell you something i heard an old an older preacher say a long time ago he said i have a, we have an advocate the bible tells us we have an advocate with the father if we do sin and we have an advocate with the father we can he said that's like an insurance policy he said now i'm going to tell you what I have an insurance policy for my car, not so I can go hit a tree, not so I can go run into a tree, go hit a tree. He said, no, it's in case it does happen. And this is the way with sin. We may find ourselves involved in something we didn't, actually didn't intend to, and then here we are. Well, we have this advocate or this insurance policy with the Lord that we can cry out to the I'm wrong. I'm wrong. I knew better. I should not have. But we lay ourselves before the Lord and surrender ourselves to the Lord to help us. And I, I wrote a scripture down. I, I believe I wrote it here. And yes, in Psalm 66 and 18, uh, this scripture that if this was David cried out and he said, if I regard or if I give place to, I have pleasure in sin in my heart, God will not hear me. Psalm 66, 18, he went on to say in the next verse, but yet he has heard me because when you come with your heart clean before the Lord, and that's the thing, but if it is not, immediately the quicker the better the sooner the better lord i have missed it i'm wrong i need help and so the lord will help us he's always there to help i tell you what he did for what satan had done for what the serpent had done uh, he, he, now adam and eve they each as we said tried to shift the blame the serpent the serpent was silent our writer said the serpent was silent serpent he didn't you know is over there as though mr innocent he didn't do anything but the Lord knows everything. The Lord knew that everybody, they all three were guilty and all were, were judged. And in, as far as that serpent, he was told him uh, that what you're going to do, he said, you, you're going to be on the ground. You, you're going to be crawling. And it, this talks about, our writer said, Bi this is the Bible's first messianic prophecy. Hostility would exist between the serpent and the woman, between the woman's offspring and, and uh, the woman's. The serpent serpent's offspring are all those who follow Satan, and the woman's offspring are all those who follow God. Their hostility, hostility would climax with the death and resurrection of Jesus Christ. And Satan would bruise Christ's heel, Christ was crucified and died on the cross, and then Christ would bruise Satan's head. Christ's resurrection defeated Satan and conquered death, the consequences of the first temptation and sin. Thank the Lord. He got our, our, our Jesus. I tell you what, Satan the Lord got right on it immediately. He didn't let it go. He didn't let it go. He was quick. He was quick to take care of this. I tell you what, it's, it's, a, it's a marvelous thing how quick and how much the Lord loves us and is so willing to get us back in right relationship with him. Now for Adam, here he was, his crops, you know, he was going to have to get out and, and uh, till uh, the, the land and he was going to have thorns and thistles and and so I know people say sometimes, well, we have Adam to thank for this. Well, as one, I've heard one person say, and probably more than one who said, if it hadn't been Adam and Eve, it'd been us. It's somewhere along the way. There have been those who have questioned and wonder how long was Adam and Eve in the garden before sin, the sin occurred? I don't know. The scripture doesn't say. And I know some people think that it happened within just a few days. Uh, I know others think that it would happen maybe a year. I, I just don't know, and so I'm, I'm not going to get into it because I, I just don't know. But I do know this, that the Lord made a way for us, and I'm thankful for that. Now, Eve, he did, bless her, she could continue. There would be, they could have the children. It would still be that, that they would have, could have a family. It would be, but it would be marked by painful labor. And the husband whom she drew into sin with her would now rule over her. 
So now uh, here they are. They're having to leave because Satan has uh, had, they've fallen through his lie. It was it resulted in one of the worst things. Now was that they're going to die physically. They're going to die, and but they had had to be cast out of the garden. Of Eden, because if they had partaken of the, of the tree of life, what would have happened? They would have li been forever lost in sin. But anyway, we'll get on in, into that further. I, I cannot imagine what it was like for these people when they realized the far, and I don't know, it, it, well, they couldn't, I don't believe, really see the far-reaching effects, but just to know that they themselves and their children, and then there might have been times that they did. They, maybe they, would, they laid awake at night, or maybe during the day, just in a day of just wondering, all of the people that are going to be born and we we because of what we did and the, the guilt that that was but the Lord I'm sure was able to help them some way but to, to face it was the thing we have to do not just say oh well if it wasn't me it had been somebody else it's something that we should be anytime that we fall into that we are that we miss the mark we should be coming to God and feel very very sorry that especially if we've been had anybody else involved in what we were doing Judgment and grace is the next part of our lesson. Our God is the God of salvation. He covered Adam and Eve after their sin was exposed, and he prevented them from living in this sinful state, living forever in this sinful state. He also helped them to establish a life after they had failed, a life with the joy of family. You know, the God who works judgment also works salvation. I'm so thankful that he covers our sins and he helps us. What he did now is they realized now that, that they were naked. They knew the, the difference between good and evil. And now it was a totally different thing. And the Lord was, he had a plan for them. And so here he is taking care of them. He's helping them. And I, I, it mentions here how that, uh, you, how that they, uh, how that the Lord, how that he, he killed the animals. He took the skins of the animals and he clothed them. And so there again, you have the first time to see of, of a blood sacrifice. The Lord was was looking for the, out for them. He was helping them, ministering to them, doing for them what they could not do for themselves. He was showing them the way, what to do. I love how he cared. To ensure that Adam and Eve could not return to the garden and eat from the tree of life, God was very careful that he placed the cherubim as angelic uh, gardens at the, to the east of Eden, he also gave the cherubim a flaming sword. Always think about that flaming sword which turned every way to keep the way of the tree of life. I've always wondered, thought it was a huge, probably a, a, a huge flaming sword. I thought I envisioned a huge, just uh, awful. It was very, very big. So we're thankful that the Lord was there for them to make, make sure they didn't get back in to live forever in sin. So God is so faithful. He's so good. You know that Adam and Eve, when they were uh, expecting their first child, uh, our writer brings out that what was she maybe looking for? Maybe she had hoped for a fulfillment of God's promise of a serpent crushing male offspring. Cain would be, as his father Adam, a tiller of the ground. Then he had a brother that was born. His name was Abel, and he became a shepherd. That was an occupation that is, that is uh, repeated many times in the Bible. And I like how our writer said it brings out the picture of God's love and care for his people. Oh, how the Lord uh, would, had ministered and helped them now. They had this family. But then what happened, you know, we all have, we have to make our choices. And they needed to bring, uh, they needed to bring their, uh, a, a sacrifice they were going to worship or bring a, their gift to the Lord. Acceptable versus unacceptable. Abel murdered over worship. Imagine that. Abel murdered, uh, or not Abel, Abel was murdered over, uh, over uh, worship by Cain. And so the actions we perform in worship reflect our attitudes. If you come to church and you don't really honor the Lord, you just come because, well, you just want to be seen. Or there are some people, if they're a business person, they come because it's good for their business. If you come for a wrong reason like that, well, it's good to come to church. But if you have a wrong attitude, and like in this case, uh, it is... Like said, it brings out that it's apparent that Adam and Eve taught their sons about God's goodness, his holiness, and his worthiness to be worshipped. Cain brought God some fruit of the ground. He just brought some fruit of the ground, something as an offering. But Abel brought the best portions of the firstborn lambs he had shepherded. He brought his best, and, and God looked not merely at the offerings, but at the heart of each of those worshipers. It seems as though that Cain, it was just, uh, 
really no special description about it. He just brought a gift like, oh, okay. You know, I, I know a person that said to us one time, well, God, I give him his fair share. Well, just like he was the one just determining what was the fair share. Well, what does God's word say? You know, we need to bring of the very best that we have. And, and But anyway, but Abel gave the best part of those animals. And the Lord saw that, how that, how he... How he, he had such faith and trust in God. And, but when God responded differently to the two offerings, because Cain became angry when, when the Lord, he, he, didn't, he didn't accept his. But, but what Abel had done, and he, he accepted that because he, his heart was so different. He, he, loved, he loved the Lord and he came with just a heart of love and gratefulness. He brought the very best that he had, the very best he brought to God. And God warned Cain and encouraged him to master sin temptation. He was warning him, but you know, he didn't accept it. He ignored God's warning and so much, he, what he did. Now, he was so angry. Now, you will see this oftentimes, and, and the Bible bears this out, how that, uh, but because that when they went after Jesus, they'll go after us too. And the thing of it is, now that, that you know, uh, Jesus was walking on the earth, they could actually take him out. But yet, but he rose victorious over death hell and the grave and so he's I mean he's victorious over it all that didn't work out the way they thought that it would but even people today they can't get to God who lives on high so what do they do they go for the children of God and do everything they can to harm them sometimes if they are a person of evil they, they will do that there are many people that are not saved that are not evil like that to the point in fact there are many of those who are not saved who appreciate Christians and they honor them and respect them and we, we appreciate that we hope that they will come to the Lord. You know, the Lord entered, uh, you know, when he held it, ignoring God's warning, how the Cain had gone out and he lured Abel into the field and he murdered him. And God, or God again, entered into the situation. I, that's what I found out God will confront. He doesn't wring his hands and say, I don't know what to do or I don't know, I don't want to have to face. No, he immediately went. He wants this man to confess what he has done that he can repent, he can offer a sacrifice, he can, but the spilled, the blood of Abel testified of Cain's act of violence against his brother, made in God's image. That's what he had done. But instead of confess, when the Lord talked to him about it, and he said, "Where is it? Where is it? Where is your your brother? Am I my brother's keeper?" And he said, "I know exactly what's happened. His blood is crying from the ground. I know exactly what you have done." So it was a horrible thing how Cain's efforts would be wholly unrewarded. In addition, Cain would become a homeless wanderer. Cain cried out, not in repentance, but in complaint. He was recognizing his fourfold banishment from the land, from God himself, from home, and from society. He also feared that people are going to come and kill me. They're going to hate me for, because of what I've done. You know, he's the one that had done the sinning, and now he's upset because of the consequences of his sin. Well, he brought it on himself. But, and he feared the people, that they're, they're going to kill me. But the Lord had, had reserved the right of punishment for himself. And he promised sevenfold punishment for any prospective murder of Cain. And he put a mark on Cain, something on, the, on Cain himself or a phenomenon in his surroundings to warn the possible attackers. Pe many people have asked, and what was it? What was the, the sign uh, that it was? Uh, the mark, what was the mark? I don't know. I don't know. The scripture doesn't say that I'm aware of. And if it's there, I didn't see it. But walking away from God, Cain settled in Nod. It was play, a land, and what that means was wandering. Well, that was exactly what he was. He went out from the presence of God and he started the family. Sadly, instead of his descendants living a life of thankfulness before God, instead, uh, they seem to have like Cain's attitude. It was a mindset of entitlement concerning God's grace. At this just thought, it really, uh, it's not really right that what what's they didn't feel like it was really right for what happened to them instead of his descendants living a life of life of thankfulness for God's fearing Cain. It was a totally different thing for these people. Cain took a wife, became a father. Five generations later, his descendant Lamech married two wives. And like Cain, this man took another took another person's life. But he said, but I did it in, in self-defense. And so uh, he felt like, my, now they're going to be hunting me. And, and, and I, when you look at this life, un, unfortunately, now we know that this family didn't have, didn't have to live like, like Cain did. 
but that's what they had, they had chosen. Each person has to make their choice. Just because they had parents like this, like, like Cain was, and how uh, that he had murdered, and now we have one of his sons had, has murdered. You don't have to follow in that. There, there are families that you see things like that. On the other hand, you've seen somebody in a family that says, I'm not going to live like that. I'm going to live my life for the Lord. And they do. They live faithful. And some people will say, I've never seen anything like that. They're nothing like their family. You wouldn't even know they was out of that family. Well, what that is is just the grace and goodness of God. And I like he doesn't say, well, you're just like your family and I'm not even going to mess with you. No. Each individual can have the relationship with the Lord, and that is what he wants. Adam and Eve lost Abel when Cain uh, murdered him, and they lost Cain when he fell under God's judgment. Then brought, brought out, our writer brings out, however God restores in the aftermath of sin's results. And so at what Eve named their next son, Seth, meaning granted, for God had given them another son to take the place of Abel. And then Seth named his own son Enish, meaning man or, or mankind. So Abel had been murdered when his brother became jealous of God's response to his worship. Worship was then now restored as people began to call upon the name of the Lord. That's a wonderful thing when people begin calling on the name of the Lord, and that's what we want to see in our day and time. I'm thankful that many do. We want to see many more do the same thing. That, that is our, 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 our choice. That's what we would like to see done. That's, what are some ways that people abuse God's for forgiveness? Uh, I think that that's one thing you can be thinking on that question. What are some ways that people abuse God's for forgiveness? I think, as I said earlier, that some people feel like, well, I'll just go ahead and, and uh, you know, it's easier for me to ask for me to ask forgiveness than it is for me to uh, to ask permission. And they take uh, for granted, and they don't really respect and love the Lord and worship Him as they should. But I'm thankful you take that. Can you list some biblical examples of God restoring what had been lost? You take King David, who had sinned horribly. He acknowledged that, and he was uh, so repentant. Uh, he was absolutely beyond the grief that he felt. I believe it's I believe it's Psalm 51, 50 or 51, where he confesses a sin of how morbid and how awful it was what he had done. He said, against you only have I sinned, Lord, and how he repented. And this is one thing the Lord loved about David, that he was repentant. When he sinned, he was deeply repentant and totally did. Unfortunately, uh, he, he would sin again. But the thing is, I stop and look at it, not that I'm alibiing for what he did, but he did not live under the plan of salvation like, like we do. He didn't know what it was to have grace. And so you... It was a totally different thing. And our the final thing in our lesson or toward the close is what is God saying to us? One thing for sure, we know that sin spoils, it ruins, and destroys everything it touches. By taking her eyes off God and his command and placing them on the promises of Satan, Eve fell away from the obedience and fell into sin. You know, it's baby steps, oftentimes, what, how people get involved in things. I remember a pastor's wife telling me that she had always told her children, you can always come talk to me about anything, anytime. And she said, even though it's something that it may be some horrible sin, she said, I want you to know I'll still love you. I want you to always know you can come talk to me. And her youngest son came to her one day. He was a married man. And he came to her and he told her of how he had gotten involved with a young woman on his job. Yet this man's marriage wasn't going well. And he got involved with actually a teenager on his job. And he said to his mother, she was telling me that he told her, said, Mom, I want you to know I never planned this. It was, some, I never planned this. And she believed him, and I, I would believe that could, have actually, that could have been that way. But that's what happens. You know, it's baby steps. Many times people commit sins and get involved in things. It just, it just seems so okay, or it's no big deal. This is another thing I want to address. People will say, well, well I don't know why you're going to worry about that. that n nobody knows. I know and God knows. We know if we're doing wrong. And it should, you know, we don't want to break the heart of God. We just don't want to sin. 
No excuses of saying, well, I did it because. It's, we don't want to do that. If I regard sin in my heart, God will not hear me. Psalm 66, 18. Lucifer always lies. Remember when Satan uh, says something, it's an empty promise. He always lies. But what the Lord always tells the truth. And he wants nothing but good for us. So I want to listen to what he has to say. Ask God to help you take responsibility for your own sin and the harm it has caused. Just own up to it. And let the Lord help us, guide us, and direct us. Examine your heart for any hidden sin and confess it, trusting God to forgive you from uh, through Jesus Christ. Uh, there, you know, if there is some secret, but well, maybe nobody does know, but we know, and we want to be right before God. I tell you what, I don't want to miss heaven over anything. I want to totally surrender to the Lord. Look for forgiveness and reconciliation opportunities in relationships that have suffered from bitterness or jealousy. Does the Lord help us that we have everything clean and pure, everything under the blood. We never know when our time will come. I will be ready to meet him. All have sinned and come short of the glory of God. And I know that the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life. And I tell you what, if we will confess our sins, he's faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Thank the Lord. May the Lord bless you and keep you. And we look forward to seeing you at Sunday school tomorrow at where we are there in Elgin, Oklahoma. We do have uh, classes for all ages. We begin at 945. We're located at 921 Third Street, Elgin, Oklahoma. And then our pastor, Brother Larry Toma, will be preaching in, at 1045. Look forward to a great service. So if you don't have a home church, you're welcome to come. You have a blessed evening. With the Lord willing, we'll see you next, late next Saturday after, afternoon. All right, Saturday, probably at night. All right, goodbye. See you then.